So this is a Moa Moa, uh, Owl Moa Moa. I don't know if you know what it is, but I'll pull the uh, picture on the screen real quick. All right, so this is it. Now this thing is cool. This flew through our uh, solar system a couple years back, about 2017, and it baffled us. It was reflecting light in, in weird patterns. It didn't make any sense. And people were like, is it, it was the first recorded interstellar object to enter and leave our solar system. So it came in and left. And not only did it leave, it accelerated. That's right. It didn't, it wasn't a constant speed. It didn't like go in. It looped around the sun and sped up and out of our solar system. Okay. So that in itself is pretty amazing. Okay. It's pretty amazing. But then we got this guy who's coming out recently. Well, actually, he always kind of believed it, but now he's, he came out with a book about it, and I'll get into that. Harvard astronomer argues that alien vessel paid us a visit. That's right. Discovering there's intelligent life beyond our planet could be the most transformative event in human history. I agree. But what if scientists decided to collectively ignore evidence suggesting it already happened? That's the premise of a new book, by a top astronomer who argues that the simplest and best explanation for the highly unusual characteristics of interstellar object that sped through our solar system in 2017 is that it was alien technology. Occam's razor. It's the easiest, uh, the, the simplest solution is quite often the one that is the answer. Sound kooky. Uh, Avi Loeb says the evidence hold otherwise and is convinced his, or is convinced his peers in the scientific community are so consumed by groupthink, they are unwilling to wield Occam's razor. Loeb's stellar credentials. He was the longest serving chair of astronomy at Harvard, has published hundreds of pioneering papers, and has collaborated with greats like the late Stephen Hawking, making him difficult to dismiss outright. Thinking that we are unique and special and privileged is arrogant. He told F AFP in a video call. The correct approach is to be modest and say, we're nothing special. There are lots of other cultures out there and we just need to find them. I, I, you know, I tend to agree with him. You know, what do you think? Do you, you know, it's like, if we think we're so high and mighty, then we're kind of stalling ourselves. If we believe that there's other, other things out there and we want to reach out to them and, and get there, then I think it'll it'll help that process along. And we really are, in the end, at the end of the day, just dust, carbon. Anyway, Loeb 58 lays out the argument for the alien origins of the object name Oumuamua, scout in Hawaiian, in extraterrestrial, the first sign of intelligent life beyond Earth. And that's the name of his, his book. The facts are as follows. In October 2017, astronomers observed an object moving so quickly it could only have come from another star, the first recorded interstellar interloper. It doesn't seem to be an ordinary rock, because after slingshotting around the sun, it sped up and deviated from the expected trajectory, propelled by a mysterious force. All right, come on. I didn't even realize that it actually changed trajectory. We have been watching all the different objects that are flying around our solar system. We track them. We know when there's going to be a meteorite that, you know, or something that comes close to earth. Um, one was actually late 2020 that came close by. It was, I don't know, a hundred thousand. I don't remember exactly how close it was, but it doesn't matter. It was like, we were watching it because there was a slight chance it, it could come near us. Um, but we know exactly where the trajectory is. We see these, we know how to calculate that stuff. So the fact that it sped up, I knew that it sped up. I always thought that was weird. But the fact that it actually was deviating from the trajectory that they had plotted for it, that's weird. And then another thing. Well, actually, it, it goes into this later. I'm gonna, I'll keep reading. This could easily be explained if it was a comet expelling gas and debris, but there was no visible evidence of this outgassing. The, travel, the Traveler also tumbled in a strange way, as inferred by how it got brighter and dimmer in scientists' telescopes. And it was unusually luminous, possibly suggesting it was made from a bright metal. 
In order to explain what happened, astronomers had to come up with novel theories, such as it was made up of hydrogen and ice and would therefore not have visible trails, or that it disintegrated into a dust cloud. These ideas that came to the explain specific properties of Oumuamua always involve something that we've never seen before, said Loeb. If that's the direction we are taking, then why not contemplate an artificial origin? I agree. Oumuamua was never photographed up close during its brief sojourn. We only learned of its existence once it was already on its way out of our solar system. There are two shapes that fit the peculiar the pu uh, peculiarities of ob uh, observed long and thin like a cigar or flat and round like a pancake almost razor thin which i found really interesting because if you look at it that's what we saw right long and thin like a cigar shape but if it was facing us and it could have been a disc like how would we know because we only got one perspective from it i found that was interesting because as they say, well, I'll continue because it continues to explain. Loeb says simulations favor the latter and believe the ob object was deliberately crafted as a light sail propelled by stellar, uh, stellar radiation. So he actually says the simulations that we have of this object favor that it was flat and a pancake like similar to something to be able to catch light and radiation. Hmm. Another oddity was the way the object moved compounding the strangeness of its passage. Before encountering our sun, Oumuamua was at rest relative to nearby stars, statistically very rare. Rather than think of it as a vessel hurtling through space from the object's perspective, our solar system slammed into it. Now keep in mind, our solar system right now is moving through space. I think it's like some crazy number, like 30,000 miles a second or some crazy number, but our sun which we revolve around is moving through space. It's it's constantly moving. We're moving the the Milky Way is a constant um, spiral. You know, it's a spiral galaxy, and our solar system is in that spiral galaxy moving. So what they're saying is, Oumuamua was resting, and we our solar system came and slammed into it, and it then sl slung shot itself, changed trajectory. After slingshotting around our sun, picked up speed and changed trajectory to a certain direction. What? Really? That that's uh, amazing. How how do I how do I say that? Every, no, it's amazing. That's that's how I can say it. It's incredible. So he goes on. Perhaps Oumuamua was like a buoy, resting in the expanse of the universe. Writes Loeb, like. A tripwire left by an intelligent life form waiting to be triggered by a star system or maybe by a star system that has radio frequencies being sent out because we have them being sent out. We're constantly looking for anything we can find. I'm sure if they picked up any sort of life, I don't know. It's amazing. though. Let's keep, keep it moving. Loeb's ideas have placed him at odds with fellow astronomers. Writing in Forbes, astrophysics astrophysicist Ethan Siegel called Loeb a once respected scientist who having failed to convince his peers of his arguments have taken to pandering to the public Loeb for his part protests a culture of bullying in the uh, academy that punishes those who question orthodoxy just as Galileo was punished when he proposed the earth was not the center of the universe compared to a speculative yet respected branches of theoretical physics such as looking for dark matter or multiverses, the search for alien life is far more common sense avenue to pursue, he said. That's why Loeb's pushing for a new branch of astronomy, space archaeology, to hunt for the biological and technological signs of extraterrestrials. I just got to say, that sounds so awesome. Space archaeology. I love that. I, I love space. Who am I kidding? You all know this. If we find evidence for techno technologies that took a million years to develop, then we can get a shortcut into those technologies. We can employ them on Earth, says Loeb, who spent his childhood on an Israeli farm reading philosophy and pondering life's big questions. Such as a discovery could also give us a sense that we are part of the same team as humanity confronts threats ranging from climate change to nuclear conflict, 
Rather than fight each other like the nations often do, we perhaps collaborate. Like being on the same team, realizing that we should come together to win this game that we're playing, which is life. It's interesting how this obscure article about space summed up so perfectly what I've been talking about this whole time. That we should come together and, and be on the same team. This, this scientist who they're trying to squash down and get him to n not be uh, listened to, essentially, even though he's accredited. He's been around a long time. He sat on the top of the board at, at Harvard for many years. He's not someone to just dismiss lightly. But in fact, they want everyone to dismiss him because maybe he's onto something. And they don't think the public is ready for it. I don't know. I think it's really interesting. This is his book, Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth by Avi Loeb. I'm very interested in this because I didn't even know that Oumuamua changed trajectory. That's incredible to me. Seriously, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty incredible. Incredible.